Good morning guys, <clears throat> I'm back and I will continue in this video to show you how to deploy uh, UNL machines. In this case we will deploy it into the ESXi which is very nice VMware uh, hypervisor and can be used for servers, server environment as well for corporate. Yeah, it's, it's one of the best options actually when you are using the ESXi and you have it's a very heavy, heavy PC for example which natively installed ESXi or servers. So let's start it. So I have install it my own uh, ESXi and let's to jump in where is my ESXi so and the root and uh, my password okay <coughs> so here we are okay good and let's start it so I'm checking I'm marking my uh, host which is ESXi and I'm saying to deploy OVF template. Uh, the first, I'm show, I will show you again where I got this image. I got downloaded from our, our website and it's going to downloads and a little bit scroll down in the Google Drive mirror and uh, you can see you can easily download but I did it before and let's start to deploy. So I'm choosing my image which is on my desktop as you see here, right? this one open next okay next and I'm saying accept okay next uh, the name you can rename as you wish which much which much you need UNL test for me here okay next uh, and please leave the thick provision z lazy zero eight do not choose the thin or, or, or another option because I faced many uh, many problems uh, guys are coming to me what happens and uh, why the big images large images actually like CSR won't boot yeah, it's and it is it was a problem in here so leave the hard drive is a thick provision right next uh, finish so we are going uh, the deployment starts and I'm going to pause so deployment finishing and it's done completed successfully so we have our freshly deployed new UNL machine here let's grab my scratchings and check so deploy is done the second tune before first boot so I'm going to tune RAM and networks from vSphere client. Okay, I'm going to edit virtual machine settings and let's check. So about memory, give as much as you can because uh, actually for very large and scalable labs you probably will need yeah, it's maybe 32 gigs up even for 64 but I saw the servers were UNL machines uh, having a 1 to 8 gigabits RAM yeah it's, and it's pretty good and then let's say some some 16 processors and then so on in my case I have not such big yeah it's a ESXi and I'm choosing the 8 gig RAM will be allowed for UNL machine CPUs I'm assigning that uh, Totally, I have in this ESXi eight cores, and that's why I'm saying it will be four and two. So totally eight. If you will have the ESXi installed of your own servers, it can be cores can be 32, 24. The recommendation is the 16. If you if you if you're doing, let's say that's eight and two, right? In my case, it will be four and two. Yeah, but our UNL uh, servers, which are test servers, we are running on a 16 CPUs here. Well, so, uh, and we have the only one single network adapter which is connected to the our my network. It's actually my homeland. It's a 172.25.1.0.24, uh, mask 24. And but for next use, for f let's say for future, I would like to add a couple Ethernet adapters more. Okay, and so I'm going to add Ethernet adapter next and the type please choose E1000 okay the E1000 this one is a good point yeah it's because this one will work you with the outside LAN and, and uh, it is compatible with uh, UNL right okay I'm saying next and finish I will add, add one more Ethernet adapter okay it is E1000 okay good next finish and I'm adding one more Ethernet next E1000 and next and okay 
finish good so three three is enough for me and let me show you one more thing i would not like that these three added new interfaces are reside <coughs> reside in my home LAN. therefore what i'm doing i'm going to my host that's Maimon. i'm going to configuration and the networking here okay good and i'm saying to add networking the virtual machine next I'm saying that do not check and do not bind with the real interfaces, but in, in later videos I will show you how to connect, uh, connect ESXi to real LAN and you can see actually the real uh, real devices, yeah, it's even using CDP protocol, yeah, it's when the UNL switch is connected to the, through the Bridget network from ESXi to the real real port yeah it's actually server real port you will see the cdp neighbors like 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 it is directly connected it's a pretty good thing next uh and i will say that it will be unused unused okay next and uh, finish cool this one okay i'm going back to my unl test edit virtual machine settings and I would like to see the first adapter is, is very important because it is your management IP address will be given from here and you will manage your UNL from this network that's why it reside in my home LAN but three three rest interfaces I'm assigning to a new network good okay one more thing yes I'm going back and it is very important to know that if you wish to wish to went through the pings icmp protocol or, or whatever you want with the unl machine it is recommendation from me if you are going to properties here vm network is here which is my uh, management network i'm saying edit and i'm security tab and saying to accept the most important is promiscuous mode here it should be accepted that's why your unl machine will will speak with outside world okay just remember this <coughs> sorry close the same when you will add later videos i will show you how to add this yes yeah, and make this provision uh, provisioning modes yeah, it's uh, for other interfaces when we will connect the unl machine but for today it's quite enough because we are going to set up it as a first use and for management ip so this is right so ram and network i did but the very important point which we cannot to do from vSphere client is intel vt option vtx enhanced packet technology option to switch on so what to do the first option is to using vmware workstation as a tool so perfect how to do this so i have installed my uh, my um my VMware workstation on this PC and look at this option connect to remote server how do you think what is this actually you can connect your machine to the your ESXi 172.25.1.10 the root password is the same for ESXi vSphere right and I'm saying to connect connect anyway and you can see so what I can see and you can see now that here is my ESXi and you can manage actually from VMware workstation is like your management tool and you can manage your any VMware VMware machines from workstation and it is very good this is a very convenient if you have not some very high uh, high let's say high servers like vCenter installed that's why I'm showing this is a most easier way how to turn it on so I'm going to UNL test edit virtual machine settings and I'm going to processors it is similar like it was in previous video and then just to check the virtualize Intel VT EPT perfect and I'm so okay and it's done so <clears throat> our machine is actually ready for first boot for corporate some some of guys who has already installed vCenter where to where to tune on where to turn on this option in vCenter let me show you I'm going to my vCenter which is here okay and you see that it's my ESXi host and it's UNL machine it's I'm clicking on UNL test machine it's web client yeah it's and but used you know, from vcenter i open it and edit settings from my cpu 
expand this point and look here expose hardware assisted virtualization for guest OS. this in this point you can turn on look at this i turn it i, I switched it off okay and now i'm going back to the unl test machine here from workstation edit edit machine settings again and look at this it disappeared and i can check it here and everything will be fine so the two options is the most convenient and easy way if you're using the workstation as a management tool or the second option if you're using the vCenter which can be incorporated somewhere and in, installed yes yeah, and uh, ESXi are managed by uh, uh, vCenter and you can uh, turn on this exposed hardware hardware virtualization here it's done so our machine actually is ready to boot so I'm going back now to my vSphere. So in at this point, ESXC functions are ended. No more needed. Yes, because vCenter, I used it here just for show you how to turn on this option for CPU. But as you, as you see as well, it can be used with VMware Workstation to turn it on. So I'm ready to start this machine. Let me recheck the settings. It's fine. It's good. Everything is fine. Fine, fine. So the first management is my VM network, which is my homeland. So I am going to for first boot. OK, start. And I'm console calling how from here launch virtual machine console. So it started to boot. I'm going to pause. So machine is booted. <clears throat> and I'm going to enter. So my home LAN is assigned to give the DHCP IP address to distribute, but in some corporate networks, this network uh, can not be assigned for DHCP. That's why the ESXi machines are my strong recommendation to do with a static IP. And even this case, maybe you will not see any IP address because you have not, um, you have not. DHCP somewhere in for your LAN assign it. Actually, that's 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 a point what, what, which I which I uh, have to show you. So I'm going to root. Default password is root. Uh, default login is root, and the password is small caps UNL. So we are in. And as you see, like previous video, I jump it to setup uh, setup screen. Yeah, unified network lab setup. Where is it? Second console is open, and that's a question now. It's okay. <clears throat> so, and I'm starting to set up static IP address. So I'm going to uh, say the password U N U uh, N L small caps U N L. Even you not see that you are typing there. There is. It's going in. Okay. Enter U N L. OK, I'm leaving the host name and the domain is it. Yes, yeah, because it is very sensitive later for IOU use uh, with the licensing. These two points are, are sensitive. And here it's, I'm choosing the arrow down and the space bar markings that's the static. Now, I have to assign address from my home LAN. If you are looking here, it, it's my 172.25.1.0. That's mean I'm giving IP address, which will be static for you now. And 172.25.1. 50. I'm giving a 50. Okay. The mask in my network is 24. Okay. And I have a default gateway, which is 172.25.1.1, which is my home router. Okay. The DNS. The DNS I'm giving the standard one of Google. Yeah, but you can use your own. Uh, NTP server, I have my router configured as NTP as well, 172.25.1.1, and I have no proxy, that's why I'm leaving direct connection. Okay. So machine is going automatically to reboot and assign IP addresses. I'm going to pause. So my machine is booted. I'm going into the console and hitting enter. And as you see, I assigned my IP address and we can verify test now, test settings, uh, root, 
and uh, UNL. Okay, and try to ping my gateway 172.25.1.1. As you see, success. So, some IP address for ESXi UNL is done. So, but for convenient use, I recommend as you once you set up this IP address, I recommend that you are going to use uh, some PuTTY or CRT. In my case, it will be CRT. Uh, is it somewhere at that IP address? It probably not. So I can't remember. It's, uh, oh, it's here. Yeah, it's actually I have this IP. Oh no. Okay. Let's do. Let's do. So I'm choosing the new connection 172.25.1.50. Uh, the username is root, and I'm going to connect. It's asking to accept and save. Yes, and the password is UNL small caps. Save. Done. We are in. Now we can close this console because we are in and we can start. So this option I shown, the first boot I shown, static IP address, we did it and we will start after you installed the fresh new UNL machine, you have to start updates. Definitely, definitely just start an update, yeah, it's an, and check if the newest version is on. How to check which version I have in the present moment. Uh, the command from CLI, D, P, K, G, minus L, unit lab, enter. And you can see this uh, pretty old one. Yeah, it's uh, actually it's not old one. Yeah, it's uh, the old repository packs are in, and uh, necessary things are in persist there. But we will start to update it to the newest one. Okay, what I'm doing? Apt, get, update. Well, enter. <coughs> I'm going to pause. Now it started to update. Yeah, but please, please, before you start update, please verify ping to triple the triple W's Google com if uh, your DNS settings are all, are all right. Yeah, it's and then you start updates only then before you start any updates. Please be sure that you can ping ping some name type name it address like Cisco com or Google com or whatever. Okay. Yeah, it's done, and uh, let me show the step which I should uh, verify before. Yeah, it's uh, it is like pink, www, uh, 3w, uh, cisco.com, for example. Okay, yeah, you see it uh, responding to me. So after this response, you are starting to up to get updates. So the first command was done, up to get update, and I'm going to second command, up to get install unit lab okay enter when it asks to confirm yes i would like to do this i'm going to pause once the update process is done and now we can verify again with a command uh, dp kg minus l unit lab which version we have now okay and you see the version is one zero zero dash one uh, we can try to get in. Okay, I'm going to 172.25.150. Okay, and you see the screen opening. That's a web opening, and uh, login will be admin by default in a fresh machine, and the password is UNL small caps. Okay, good. I'm in, and if you are checking to the status, to the status, you can see that unit lab version as well. It's here. So did I miss something? Newest update. Done, done, done. Okay. I hope it was informative for you and thank you for viewing.